I think that, that the main things that are intersecting between Bitcoin and the Austrian School of Economics is the money supply, the question of money. And does the government have a role in issuing a money supply? Does the market have a role in issuing a money supply? What should the constraints be on this money supply? And Bitcoin obviously has a very conservative approach when it comes to issuing money. There's that famous 21 million Bitcoin cap on the supply. There's a very steady issuance that everyone knows ahead of time. You can always verify how much Bitcoin is going to be produced and has been produced. And that's uh, against the government model, which is print when we feel like it and print when we need it uh, and maybe print a little bit more just for fun. Uh, can you kind of break down how the Austrian School of Economics thinks about money printing? Why does the government have a role or not have a role in the creation of money? If you go all the way back a few thousand years, uh, money was something that emerged on the marketplace um, without the government whatsoever. It was just people looking for things that they could trade with other people, both locally and then, you know, further out into the region and then into other countries. They were looking for things uh, that they could access themselves and then retrade with other people for the things that they actually want. So it was probably one of the most important inventions uh, in human history and you know, you and myself and, and your audience can't possibly imagine living life without access to some form of money. And, and so it was critically important. And then government, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years later realized, hey, if we could get our hands on this, it would be great for the king and, and for the army. Uh, we could just print up uh, money or maybe we could tax the coins uh, that people were using and then shave a little extra gold and silver and copper off of those coins that we could remint into new coins and then use to spend. And so government realized this, you know, going back for a few thousand years and they've been controlling the money supply away from the marketplace ever since. And that's a bad thing. But for our purposes today, it's actually a good thing because we know that governments down through history have abused this power of theirs. They've printed up uh, and, and coined bad coins uh, until the value of money simply disappeared and nobody was willing to use those uh, primitive forms of money anymore. Uh, and, you know, through the Roman Empire is a great example. Uh, a couple thousand years ago when they started essentially counterfeiting their own money. And uh, eventually the copper content of their coins essentially disappeared and the Roman Empire wasn't uh, long lived after that. They disappeared as well into that hyperinflation. So governments have been abusing that uh, privilege, that power really, because they took it from the marketplace. The marketplace never offered it up and and so we have a long historical record and just in our lifetimes of course um we've seen hyperinflations and uh, we see right now uh the federal reserve has in increased the money supply by trillions of dollars the european central bank has uh you know, printed up trillions of dollars electronically now, of course, so it's even easier than in the days of coins and even in the days of paper money. Uh, now the, the central banks just simply make a decision and they type in some orders uh, on the computer and instantaneously money appears in people's accounts. Um, and it solves their problem temporarily. But of course, the longer term problem we're living through right now, because we're going to the grocery store, we're going online. I was online with Amazon and I couldn't find uh, three things uh, that I had previously purchased were no longer available by the company in size and size. Um, and, and then again, we see prices increase on Amazon. We see prices increase locally uh, at the grocery store and elsewhere. Uh, and so we're feeling the first negative effect 
of all this money printing uh, right now in a significant way. And that's been happening for, as I said, thousands of years. And uh, of course, in recent time, the boom bust cycle and uh, the general malaise in the economy has encouraged the central bankers uh, and of course the politicians behind them that provide them with with the power to print uh, to print up trillions of dollars. And so that's the government model of things uh, where they ultimately will destroy the money. Uh, they could destroy the U.S. dollar uh, as an effective medium of exchange or money. Um, and they're in the process of doing that. And they show no uh, understanding of the negative things that they're causing in the economy. Even, you know, the a few percentage point increase in CPI inflation, consumer price inflation, they don't take any responsibility for doing that. So you can't rely on them uh, to control the money supply in our favor. They can only, they'll only control the money supply in their own favor and Congress's own favor. If they need money, they'll print it up. If we have a problem, good luck. They're not going to help us. Uh, and now we're paying higher prices uh, for everything that we buy. Uh, and there's no, there's no indication uh, that those price increases aren't going to continue. So that's the government model.